Hey guys, today we're going to continue to take a look at acidic and basic solutions uh, and calculations concerning them. Uh, namely, our goal is going to be to calculate things like pH, uh, hydronium concentration, hydroxide concentration, and pOH. Essentially, what we'll be doing, we'll be taking a look at titrations. But rather than the neutralization point or the equivalence point where moles of acid equal moles of base, instead, we'll be looking at situations where we are actually either before the neutralization point and we have an excess moles of acid uh, in acidic conditions, or perhaps we are past our neutralization point or equivalence point and we have an excess of base and therefore have basic conditions. Uh, we're going to take a look at two different problems to figure out how to strategically approach these. All right, so in this first situation, I have 27.2 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Maybe I'll label this as kind of my base. Um, and I'm adding this to 95 milliliters of 0.4 molar uh, hydrochloric acid. So again, acid. Our goal is going to be to first calculate uh, the moles of the base, also the moles of the acid, um, determine what the limiting reactant is in this acid-base reaction, uh, and then using the total volume, see if we can't come up with the overall hydronium concentration and the resulting pH, okay? Uh, let's start by writing out our equation. So I have sodium hydroxide, which will be aqueous. Uh, I'm going to be reacting that with our hydrochloric acid, again, also aqueous. Um, that's going to form our liquid water and then also a salt, in this case, sodium chloride, which readily dissolves in water. Uh, and I'm going to set this up with kind of like uh, stoichiometry in mind. So I'm going to have my given number of moles. I'm going to be at having the number of moles that react, and then also the moles that are ultimately in excess. Now, in order to figure out how many moles I'm given of my base and of my acid, I have to use the information from the problem, namely the concentration and the volume. Having those pieces of information in hand, I can easily solve for the number of moles. So let's take a look. Uh, concerning sodium hydroxide, for instance, um, we're going to say that molarity is equal to moles over liters. We're given the molarity of 0 0.20 molar. So again, this will be equal to moles of my base over the volume, which is 0 0.0272 liters. Again, to convert between milliliters and liters, I simply divide by 1,000. This results in having 0 0.00544 moles worth of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so again, in the situation, I kind of have maybe my um, you know, acid in one container, my base in a different container. I've decided to mix them. Um, this is going to be an exothermic reaction. It's going to release a fair amount of energy. And we're just trying to figure out, okay, well, what is the, you know, what's going on at the end of this reaction? Again, in terms of pH and hydronium, that's kind of where we're heading. So I'll record the moles of base that I'm initially starting with, kind of my initial conditions here. I'll do the exact same thing for my hydrochloric acid. So again, molarity equals moles over liters. I was given the molarity value of the 0 0.40 there. This will equal moles over the 0 0.095 milliliters, which I've converted over to liters there. Uh, when I isolate for moles, I'm left with 0 0.038 mole HCl. So again, I'll go ahead and plug this into my kind of table I've constructed here. And what we find is in this neutralization reaction, I have a nice one to one relationship between my uh, base and my acid. Um, so as far as determining what our limiting reactant is, it's a pretty straightforward process. I have less moles of base. And as a result, as they combine with our acid in a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm going to run out of the sodium hydroxide first. So I know that of my limiting reactant, I'll label that with my LR there, all of that is going to react, right? All of it goes away. Uh, and that same amount of the excess reactant, in this case, the hydrochloric acid will react. I'll be left with zero of my sodium hydroxide uh, and through subtraction, 0 0.038 minus 0 0.00544 is 0 0.03256, okay? And this is the number I really wanna key in on. Uh, it's this excess of either acid or base, acid in this case, that's going to allow me to determine the properties of this solution. So at this point, I'm going to push on. Um, and what I'm going to do is talk about the total volume of solution. The total volume is merely going to be the 27.2 milliliters 
and the 95 milliliters now that they are combined, right? They're going to be in the same container. Um, so that is 122.2 milliliters, or again, we're going to be working with the liter value, so 0.122 liters. Now this becomes important because having the moles of acid at this point that are in excess and the total volume, well, I have moles and volume, I can solve for the concentration. And that's the first piece of information I'm being tasked with, is to solve for the concentration of hydronium, which is symbolic of acid. So I'm again going to say that molarity is equal to moles over liters. Uh, my molarity is going to equal my 0 0.03256. Again, that is the moles uh, excess of that hydrochloric acid, right? It's that value there. Uh, now, again, whether I'm talking about hydrochloric acid, I really could just be talking about the free proton, the H+, plus, uh, or what is probably most appropriate is to be talking about H3O+. Plus. So this will be the moles of H3O+. Plus. They're all one and the same. I'll divide by my now total volume of 0.1222 liters, uh, and I end up finding that the concentration of the H3O+, plus is equal to 0.27 molar. And that's kind of the first piece of information I'm being tasked with is, what is the concentration of H3O+, plus, uh, of the acid in solution at this point? Now that I have that value in hand, I know that pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration. So it merely just becomes plugging in the 0.27 molar value into my pH equation, so equals the negative log of 0.27, the negative log of 0.27 is 0.57, and that is my overall pH of the solution. Uh, that means that I have a rather acidic solution in 0.57 there, okay? Uh, let's move on to another example. Um, we're going to take a look at kind of the flip side of things, where we go ahead and we add, again, just like before, kind of an acid to a base, but what we're going to find is that we're not going to see an excess of acid as a result of the reaction occurring, we're actually gonna find there's an excess of base. And the way that we ultimately approach that is going to be a little bit different here, okay? Uh, in this case, we're dealing with rubidium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid. It's not fundamentally going to change anything, okay? Uh, I'll start by writing out my equation yet again. So I have the rubidium hydroxide, again, this is aqueous, uh, plus the hydrobromic acid, also aqueous. This will undergo a neutralization or acid-base reaction or double replacement reaction in order to form our covalent water molecule in addition to rubidium bromide. Uh, for good measure, let's check to make sure that it is balanced. Uh, indeed, we find that atoms and therefore mass is conserved. Uh, kind of that first example we saw is just kind of a nice one-to-one -one relationship there. Okay, that'll become important later. So um, let's set up our table where we have our given number of moles, we have our number of moles that will react, and then we have our number of moles that will be in excess. And again, the first thing to do is going to be identify, well, how many moles of rubidium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid do we have initially? Again, you can almost visualize them as sitting in separate containers, uh, so we can kind of, uh, in isolation, calculate their number of moles, and then upon mixing the solutions, that's what we're interested in. So. Uh, let's start with the rubidium hydroxide solution. Again, we know that molarity is equal to moles over liters. Drawing on information from the problem, uh, I'm given the volume, I'm given the molarity. So 0.25 molar equals some moles of RBOH, again, trying to solve for that, over 0 0.110 liters. Again, we just divide by 1,000 to convert milliliters over to liters there. Uh, when I isolate for mole, so I just multiply 0 0.110 liters um, on both sides, I end up getting 0 0.0275 moles. And again, that is of the rubidium hydroxide, so I can plug that into my equation, I'm sorry, my table, uh, kind of straight away there. I'll do the same thing for hydrobromic acid, so our HBr, and molarity equals moles over liters. Uh, I'm told the molarity is 0.18, solving for the number of moles, uh, the volume is 0 0.045 liters. So the number of moles I solve for there is 0 0.0081 mole. Again, that is of my acid, that is of the hydrobromic acid. So 
what we find is, again, it's a nice one-to-one -one relationship. I actually have less acid than I do of base. And as a result, my acid is going to run out in this case. All of it will be neutralized by the base, and there's going to be an excess amount of base left over. So uh, of my limiting reactant, which again in the second problem is going to be the acid, uh, all of that will react, so I'll be left with zero. Um, the same amount will react in terms of the rubidium hydroxide, uh, and I'm going to be left with 0 0.0194 moles worth of rubidium hydroxide. Okay, so this is going to be the number we kind of key in on. Now, what you cannot do at this point, so I'm going to maybe put like an X here, is to use this number. Okay, some of you guys might be thinking, oh, I can essentially use that zero, and this problem becomes a lot like the last problem. Or maybe you're thinking, well, I have zero acid left over, so my H3O plus concentration will equal to zero, right? Zero molar. And then you're going to say, okay, well, pH is equal to the negative log of my H3O plus concentration, which we just identified as zero. Uh, this, however, is undefined. You can't take the log of zero. Um, now, this becomes a little bit tricky in the sense that what you have to realize is that at any one point, there's going to be H3O plus in solution. Okay, Even in a heavily basic solution, water has the ability to auto-ionize. Uh, this goes back to the first video of this unit, where it can produce both H plus and OH minus. In fact, we have what's called the KW value, or the ion products constant value for water, that tells us that at any one point, the concentration of hydroxide multiplied by the concentration of H3O plus is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So even if we have a really high concentration of hydroxide, we're still going to have a non-zero value for our H3O plus concentration, okay? So this is not going to be a route that you can take. We cannot start by dealing with acid in this case. We have to be reliant on what we know about the moles of base or the moles of hydroxide left over. So let's take a look. Um, so I guess the first thing to do would really just kind of clarify, again, what is it we have on hand? Uh, and it is 0 0.0194 mole, again, of the RBOH that is in excess. Okay, so at this point, I've neutralized all acid, and what is just remaining is that amount of moles of base. Now, again, the rubidium is what we're going to call a spectator ion. That literally means it just kind of spectates. It sits on the side. Uh, you know, at the end of the reaction, it just kind of floats around in solution. It is the hydroxide that we are predominantly, you know, caring about. Uh, that is what is symbolic of base. The total volume, again, we're going to need that to solve for concentration, uh, is merely just the 110 milliliters uh, in addition to the 45 mils. So we're talking about a total volume of 155 mils, or again, 0.155 liters. So with this information in hand, moles of hydroxide and volume, uh, total volume of solution, I can solve for that molarity. So molarity, again, moles over liters. This is going to be equal to the 0 0.0194 mole of hydroxide over the 0.155 liters of solution. And this is going to tell me that my hydroxide concentration is equal to 0.125 molar. So again, this was kind of the per first piece of information I was being tasked with solving is the hydroxide concentration, okay? Now at this point, there's a, there's a couple different routes that you guys could take um, that really go back to day one of the material with the six equations from our unit and talking about how we solve for hydroxide, hydronium, pH, POH. Um, so there's, like I said, again, a number of different routes. Um, what I'm gonna do straight away is solve for the POH. So we know that POH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. So this is equal to the negative log of the value I just solved for, 0.125. I know that my POH, once I take the negative log of 0.125, is going to be 0.903. So of the four pieces of information I've tasked you with solving in this problem, we've just attended to two. At this point, I know that my pH plus my pOH is equal to 14. Again, this is always going to be true uh, as long as we're talking about a solution of water at 25 degrees Celsius. So pH plus 0.903 
is equal to 14. I subtract 0 0.903 on both sides. I find that our pH is equal to 13.0 uh, Nine, seven. Just kind of moving along here. Now the last piece of information is to solve for my H3O plus. That's the last thing I want to solve for. And there's actually two different routes you can take. So route number one would be to say, okay, I know the concentration of H3O plus is equal to 10 raised to the negative pH. Um, and so I could say, you know, 10 raised to the negative the pH, we just found that, uh, 13.097. Uh, this is a route you could take to do that. The other route you could take is invoking that Kw value we talked about earlier, where we know that Kw, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, is equal to hydroxide concentration multiplied by, things are getting a little cramped, sorry guys, multiplied by hydronium. So again, the products of hydroxide multiplied, I'm sorry, the products of hydroxide concentration and hydronium concentration will equal one times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. So one times 10 to the negative 14th is going to be equal to, I know what the hydroxide concentration is, so 0.125, again, times by whatever the value is for the H3O plus. So no matter whether I you know, divide by 0.125 on both sides and solve for H3O plus this way, or take 10 raised to the negative 13.097, in both cases, I arrive at 8 times by 10 to the negative 14th molar. Okay, so again, this is a really small value, 8 times 10 to the negative 14th molar. Um, but as small as it is, um, again, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, that no matter how basic the solution it is, uh, albeit this is a very, very small amount of acid uh, that's in solution, it is nonetheless present. All right, thanks guys.